You are listening to the second part of the story. You can listen to the first part in the previous video or by following the link in the description under this video. Happy listening. I took up some household chores that I had been putting off. I worked inside and outside and no one bothered me. On Thursday around noon, a van pulled up in front of my house and I saw it before they saw me while I was cleaning my roof gutters. It was a news van from a local TV station. The obvious evidence was the writing on the van. Since I had some new developments in my story, I told them that I would give them an interview. I cleaned up a bit, and we sat on the porch sipping lemonade and chatting. Yes, the rumors are true. Bradley Morgan took time out of his schedule and came here to meet with me man to man and set things right. I was never a big fan of his, but he had the intelligence and sincerity to sit right here in the chair where you are sitting right now and apologize to me for the way his PR people treated me. We talked for almost two hours before he had to leave. He's a great actor who hasn't been tainted by bohemian life. They looked at the photo of Bradley and me that I had sent them from my phone. Have you received any explanation as to why your wife ignored you as you stated on The Ellen Show? Asked my interviewer. No, but I received more information about this competition. Everything was on the rise. Heck, if my wife had checked the box on the forms she filled out indicating she was married, I would have been invited to go with her. I think she didn't want it because I would just be in her way. Plus, we were supposed to be contacted a week before so we could make plans and such. But one of his employees thought it would be a lot more romantic if they just showed up like dream people. This backfired on them, mainly because Dolly misled them. Has Dolly returned to town? Have you spoken to your wife? Yes, and yes again. Things aren't going very well, though. I catch her lying to me all the time. Well, it shouldn't be like that. What else did you talk to Bradley Morgan about? We talked about some fishing spots in the area, and I invited him to come back and fish with me. I don't expect that to happen, though. He is a very busy man and has a long way to go. Well, that's all, guys. A big-name celebrity namely Bradley Morgan, came to our neck of the woods for a quick visit to take responsibility for some of the big trouble that the Dream Date competition had become. When it came to a fight, he gathered his strength and took the blow himself. As Kurt Dillon said, he's a great actor, Bill Yoder reporting for WFDET News. This was what my children and wife saw on the evening news that night. I'm sure their jaws dropped a little at a couple of the revelations I made public, but I wanted everyone, including Rhett and Scarlet, to know how I was treated by my so-called loving wife. She made this mess. It was becoming more and more clear what she had in mind for her trip out west, and her plans definitely didn't include me in her future if things worked out the way she wanted. CNN picked up the report, and it went national, albeit lightly edited. I later received a thank you card from Bradley Morgan for the praise I gave him on air and a reminder that he could just take me up on my fishing offer, but he would call at least a week in advance. The last remark was followed by a smiley face and LOL, and it was signed Brad. Scarlet and Rhett both chastised me for airing my dirty laundry on the local news, but they also chastised Dolly for her newly revealed misdeeds. I agreed that I would not give any more interviews, since I had nothing new to say anyway. For the next couple of days, everything was quiet. I had a great yard, and I even fixed a few things around the house, work that I had previously put off. Scarlet called on Saturday night and asked if I would be at church the next morning. I said I was planning on being there, especially since I missed last week while I was in California. She said that mom would sit with her and her husband, Sam, and if I wanted, I could join them too. I don't think the church is the place for this kind of reunion. I don't want to disrupt the service, so I'll sit with Rhett and Betty. I understand, she answered. This was followed by a significant pause. Scarlet, is there anything else you wanted to say? Yes. Dad, when are you going to talk to mom? She's going crazy here. All she does is cry and talk to herself. I can't make sense of most of what she says. I'm starting to fear for her. Bring her tomorrow afternoon around two. I calm it down enough to talk. But tell her after church, I don't want her to get any IDs or make a scene. Are you, Mr. Publicity Hunter, 
worried about making a scene. I chose the right place for this. Church is not the right place for this kind of thing. I guess you're right. See you in the morning. I love you, Scarlet. I love you too, Dad. That's it. The decisive battle was scheduled. We both behaved ourselves at church and then the next morning. After an invitation to share Sunday lunch with Betty's parents, which I accepted, I went home to get ready for... What? I wasn't sure. There is no manual for this kind of thing. I had a pitcher of lemonade and two glasses sitting on the wooden table on the porch between Dolly and my favorite chairs for watching the sunset. If Scarlett and Sam wanted to stay, they could sit inside, pretend to watch TV and eavesdrop, as family members usually do. Just before two, the three of them arrived in Sam's Buick and saw me sitting on the porch. As they approached, seeing the jug and glasses, Scarlett asked, Dad, wouldn't it be better for you to do this at home? Actually, no, I don't think so. You two can go inside and watch TV and have a drink if you want to stay. If not, I'll call you when she's ready to come back. Dolly spoke. Kurt, I was really hoping that we could sort this out this afternoon and I could stay home tonight. While I don't rule out the possibility, I sincerely doubt that we can deal with all this crap to the point where you spend the night here in one day. As far as going inside, our problems started in a very public way, and maybe this is the best way to try and end them. Also, I hope this makes the conversation more polite since we are outside for everyone to see and hear us. Dolly, why don't you sit down right here where Brad sat when he was here? I poked it in her nose that he was here when she wasn't. She cocked her head to the side when I called him Brad. She had heard that only his closest friends were allowed to call him that, as his PR people thought it sounded too corny. Most people in Hollywood weren't allowed to call him that. Scarlett and Sam walked inside with instructions to make themselves at home. As Dolly started to sit down, she thought how nice it was to sit where he was sitting and smiled, but it quickly passed when she noticed that I had seen it. I don't know about you, but I have two things you need to do before we can let you spend the night in the guest room. She looked at me, waiting for further explanation. First of all, you will need to stop lying to me. Every word that comes out of your mouth, no matter how bad it makes you look, must be absolutely true. If you tell one little white lie, this meeting will end, and you will have to leave. Even the damn truth is better than a little white lie at this point. Since Brad was here and we talked for over two hours, there's not much I don't know. Do you understand this? Yes, Kurt, I understand, and I want... I cut her off. You will have many opportunities to talk. Let me finish. The second part is that you must take full responsibility for everything you have done since last Wednesday evening and be able to explain what was going on in your head while you were doing it. If I think you're, as these weirdos call it, hyping things up, this meeting is over. So the simple truth will serve you better today, okay? Yes, Kurt. Now, you can tell me whatever you want. Okay, Kurt. I want to say that I'm sorry for ignoring you like I did. I was wrong, and it was very rude of me to treat you that way. Looking back, I can't believe I did it. I want to say that I'm very sorry and that I want to go home. I want everything to be as it was before between us. I'm afraid it's impossible for things to stay the same since your actions have made it clear to everyone that Bradley Morgan is your number one choice, and I'm just a backup plan. You have publicly and privately disrespected me to such an extent that an apology is not enough. Kurt, I love you so much, and it took me this time to realize how much. What should I do to prove that I love not him, but only you? Words are cheap, and I no longer trust what comes out of your mouth, since I know for a fact that you have lied to me several times since all this shit hit the fan. I pulled out a photo of Bradley and Dolly on the red carpet, showing how lustfully and dreamily she was looking at him. When was the last time you looked at me like that? The look on your face just invites him into your bed. Can you deny it, honestly? Oh, shit. I didn't know it was so obvious. I didn't think about it. I was just caught up in all the glitz and glamour. I had just met him for the first time in the limousine on the way to the premiere, and I was still completely in our way of him. So, if after the premiere he said, let's skip this fancy party filled with celebrities, go back to your hotel, 
take off this designer dress and make love like there's no tomorrow, how would you respond to him? I, I, I would probably agree. Dolly, remember, no subterfuges or half-truths. Okay, I would jump at this chance. She had the tact to at least hang her head in shame at her confession. But he is married, and he knew that I was married too. And how did he know this? You're not wearing wedding rings in this photo, are you? No. The competition team told you to take them off? No. Then tell me why you didn't put them on. Are you going to make me do it again? It's part of taking responsibility for your actions. So yes. You're right. I thought it would be easier to seduce him if he thought I was single. So, your main goal for the weekend was to seduce Bradley Morgan in the hopes of making him, as you often put it, your next husband. And, no matter what, no one, not even your family, could interfere with your plans, right? When you say it like that, it sounds pretty bad, but it's pretty close to the truth. So, you deliberately excluded me from your trip by not checking the I will bring my husband, fiancé, box on every page and entry form you submitted. How did you? Yes, I did it. Her shoulders slump it and her head drop it again. I told you that Brad and I talked for a couple of hours, didn't I? He told me a lot of things. You've done well so far, but it's not over yet. So, how would I fit into your plans if you climbed into bed with him, but then he abandoned you like a cheap old blanket? I would just tell you what I wanted you to know about my trip and give you a great week or so of sex, telling you that the whole time around Bradley I was so horny that I couldn't get any relief. That's pretty cold and calculating, don't you think? So, you kept us in the dark, keeping us guessing if you were okay or if you were kidnapped or God knows what, so you wouldn't get caught up in your lies in the unlikely event that he slept with you and sent you on your way? And you didn't tell us where you were staying so we couldn't call you and interrupt the wonderful sex you were so sure of? Yes. I suppose so. She lowered her head again, unable to meet my gaze. So, if the worst happened and you tried to get into bed with him and he dumped you like a cheap easy girl, how would you react? You would just take a shower and come home to me and always remember such a wonderful sexual encounter with the great Bradley Morgan and I would have his used and dirty remains. Does that sum it up? Yes, but coming from you it sounds so cheap and... Because it was very cheap, stupid, I'm just bringing it out into the open where the daylight shows your plan for what it was. If you think I'm making you look like a cheap slut on a once-in-a-lifetime mission, go ahead and explain it to me in a way that doesn't sound so mean. Come on, try it. I suppose my plan started innocently enough. If I won, you wouldn't even want to participate since you never liked Morgan's weird lifestyle and you'd still have to stay in the background for the PR shots. Then I thought that I couldn't seduce a big star like him. She and Cindy were on TV that night and you noticed how much prettier and younger I was than her. It actually made me feel like I had a chance with him, especially after the Hollywood makeover. So you're partially blaming me for this crap? Because of a simple compliment? No, no. Please don't take it that way. It was the boost of confidence that I received from this compliment, the look at her and me through the eyes of a man that pushed me to the edge of the abyss. I think I would have tried it anyway, but your compliment just made me want to start sooner. Once that hurdle was overcome, there was a struggle about what would happen if things went wrong. But I never expected the Facebook event to take on a life of its own. So... You thought that I would just sit here silently at home and not worry about you, or wonder what was really going on? You know that I am more of a man of action, I am not a weakling. You were simply swept away from here, like a tornado carries away a leaf, and you immediately began to ignore my calls and messages. What was wrong with that? Your first call came during the limousine ride, when they were telling me all the details of what would happen to me over the next few days. I ignored him because I didn't want to miss a word of what they were saying. After a while, I got tired of ignoring your calls and messages and turned off the phone. I'm so sorry, Kurt. I'm really sorry. Are you sorry for what you did? Or sorry that your plan failed? Or sorry that you got caught? Honestly, I'm sorry for all of this, but most of all, I'm sorry that I hurt you so much that you kicked me out of my own home. 
the home we have created over the past 30 years together, where we have raised our two wonderful children, and where we have so many memories. Okay, stop this emotional crap. So what was that lie when I finally talked to you? I thought that if you didn't know everything, and since nothing happened there anyway, a few innocent deceptions would smooth things over better and faster. It would also cause you less pain. How kind of you, I commented sarcastically, but what it really showed was how much respect you had lost for me. Did you really think that I would believe that your phone died after it was on the charger for over three hours? That I would believe that you couldn't borrow a phone or charger from anyone around you? That the hotel phones didn't work the entire time you were there? I'm not nearly that stupid. So you thought that I was not only a weakling, but also a stupid weakling? I think it was, it seemed like all the passion from our younger days had faded away, and you would just be busy without me for a few days. I'm sorry. Now I know without a doubt that you are neither one nor the other. I will never take you for granted again, ever. I took a long, thoughtful sip of my lemonade and let the silence rise to an uncomfortable level. Why should I believe you when you said nothing happened? Apparently Bradley said the same thing and even suggested I call his wife to check it out. But a lot of these bohemian weirdos do threesomes. I don't think a threesome with Cindy would fit well into your grand plan, but I think you probably would have done it anyway, if only to spend time in bed with your idol. So why should I trust you? Her face showed shock at the possibility of a threesome, which she had not considered, and then she replied, I didn't lie to you today. Not a single word was less than the complete truth. I bear my soul to you, Kurt. I'm opening up completely and showing you all the ugly, vile thoughts and ideas that have been running through my head since I first heard about this damn competition. I am terribly ashamed of myself, my thoughts, and my actions. Have you never had such thoughts? Yes, but I quickly remind myself how much I love you and our life together. I remind myself that by acting on these thoughts, or even allowing them to linger too long, I am putting it all at risk. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have them, but I keep things in perspective. The risk is nowhere near worth the potential reward. That's how much I valued our relationship. It was a big kick in the ass when I realized that you didn't value it or me nearly as much. I'm so sorry I hurt you so much, Kurt. I guess I didn't really think about it as much as I thought I did. This is another question that interests me. How long have you been planning all this? Well, the period for submitting applications for participation in the competition was from the 1st to the 30th of April. It took them six weeks to choose the winner. We're in mid-June now, so about 10 weeks. So you put 10 weeks of planning into this farce. For 10 weeks, you thought about how you would lie to me and manipulate me into running away for the weekend and sleeping with another man if you won. Do you realize that the only thing you've been planning for so long is our wedding and our children's weddings? Don't you find it ironic that the only thing you've been planning for longer than the possible destruction of our marriage was the beginning of it? I really didn't think about it like that. Do you understand what made me call you so soon was the remark you made when you left? What did I say? Part of it was what you didn't say. Goodbye. You didn't tell me anything in your big rush to get out the door. No goodbye, no kiss my ass, no I'll call you when I get to the hotel, no kiss, nothing. You ignored me from the very beginning. Then I heard you mutter on the way out that, finally meet your next husband. Oh shit, I had no idea I said that out loud. I'm so sorry, Kurt, that must have hurt you. You know, I tried not to say this anymore. And for the most part, you've done a good job of keeping your fantasy life to yourself. How do you feel now that your fantasy is gone and dead? You know Bradley won't have anything to do with you anymore, right? Yes, that's why I was so surprised when I heard that he came here in person. I feel a little empty inside now that it's gone, but I feel a lot more empty thinking that we couldn't, could. She broke down and cried for a few minutes. I sipped my lemonade and listened to the birds sing while she collected her thoughts. Part of me was torn and wanted to console her, but it was too soon for me to do so. I sat in silence. I'm sorry, Kurt. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. I thought I cried at all last week. 
I guess I was wrong again. I want you to hear something. I recorded my conversation with Brad, and I have a part of it that I want you to listen to. I want you to know how he feels about what you did. I pulled my phone out of my pocket and opened the app I was using. I pressed the button for the part I wanted and configured. Brad, there's something you should know that might help explain why I reacted the way I did. Dolly has been a big fan of yours since your first big album came out. She joked that you would be her next husband. If she had done it a few times and stopped, it would have been fine. But a few thousand times later, I think it took on a fantasy life of its own in her mind. When she left here last week, she didn't say goodbye to me, but I heard her mutter that she's finally going to meet her next husband. Dude, she's just sick. If I were you, I would never tolerate such disrespect. You must really love her if you put up with this. Her hands flew to her mouth. There was her imaginary man calling her disrespectful and sick and saying that he would never put up with her crap. The rest of her fantasy died right then and there, and she cried for a few more minutes. When she pulled herself together, I began, Don't you want to say me something? I want to tell you that I love you very much, although I haven't shown it lately. Maybe I took you for granted because you always treated me so well and assumed that you would always treat me that way. Almost losing you so succinctly reminded me how much I love you and only you. My feelings for Bradley were just a schoolgirl romantic fling, not love, especially not the lasting love we have. I love you, Kurt, and I will do everything in my power to prove it to you. I want to tell you that I deeply regret everything. I apologize for disrespecting you, for planning this, for allowing myself to be carried away by a stupid fantasy over the years, for lying, for ignoring you, for underestimating you, and so much more. I can't even think about it now, so I'm sorry. I love you, and only you, so much, and I will do everything in my power. Would you walk around town naked with I didn't sleep with Bradley Morgan in big letters across your chest and stomach and what I'd really like on your back? Oh, damn, are you really going to make me do this? I have a marker. I pulled out a large black marker from my shirt pocket and placed it on the table. We looked at each other for 30 seconds. If I do this for you, can I at least go back to the guest room of my own house? Maybe. Is there anything else you can think of? Currently, no. Shit. If that's all, then I'll take it. She reluctantly stood up and began to unbutton her blouse. I let her get to the point where she took it off her shoulders. Stop. It's enough. I'm impressed you made it this far. I know how modest you have always been when you talk about your nakedness. Dolly quickly covered herself and sat down, buttoning herself up as she went. There was a huge look of relief on her face. I think we've made some good progress today, but I want you to go back to Scarlet and think about this issue for a few days. And then we'll get together again when you're ready. Okay, of course, anything. What question? I want you to take your time and answer this question as honestly as you can. This is a two-part question. If you were me and I were you, would you do the same thing I did, or what would you do differently? And under what circumstances would you take me back? Remember, you are me, the man who was publicly disrespected by the love of his life, and the guy who had your fantasy waved in his face for years before this shit hit the fan. I will remind you one last time how important honesty is right now, and I will also remind you that after 30 years together, I seem to know you better than you know me. So think about it and choose your answer carefully. Let me know when you're ready to answer. Kurt, I can answer this question right now. Scarlett told me to put myself in your shoes the other day, and I've had a lot of time to think about it. I must honestly say that I would never believe that nothing happened, even if you had some evidence to the contrary. I would kick your ass to the curb without giving you a chance to defend yourself or explain anything. I have come to the conclusion that you are a much better person than me, and I must change to become a better person, whether you take me back or not. I'm certainly not proud of myself for being so demanding but unforgiving and then becoming a complete hypocrite when things change. I can honestly say that my pride would not allow me to let you back into our home 
and I know that I have deeply hurt your pride. All I can count on is your deep sense of right and wrong and your ability to forgive. I already told you that I know I have to change my habits, and I fully intend to do so. I would like you to help me become a better person, Kurt. Please. Well, that was fair, of course. Let me think about this for a moment. In the meantime, you should pack the things you need and go back to Scarlet. I'll stay here on the porch and think for a while while you're inside. Kurt, thank you. Now I have some hope that we can get through this. I will do as you say, but please don't take it too long. You know I've never been overly patient. We both grinned at the truth. Thirty minutes later she came out with her suitcase, Scarlet and Sam. Scarlet hugged and kissed me before leaving. Thank you for not being too strict with her, Dad. But don't wait too long to make a decision. I love my mom, but she's not the best guest in the house right now. I understand. Love you, Scarlet. I love you too, Dad. She replied. Leaving, Sam added. See you later. Dolly was the last to come down from the porch. Kurt, please remember that I love you, and I will do everything in my power to make things right. Please let me back into your life. I love you so much. I will be in touch. On Monday afternoon, Scarlett called me at work. Hey, Dad, have you made a decision about Mom yet? No, but I will tell you that our meeting yesterday went better than I had hoped. So, when can she come home? I'm working on it. Assuming I would take her back, she suggested changing, and I'm going to force her to do it. I just need to figure out a few things. That sounds promising, Dad. Just because she did something crazy stupid doesn't mean you have to do crazy things, too. You should know that she is taking this very hard. She's so hard on herself because of this mess. The longer you wait, the more afraid I am that she will do something drastic. Something radical? Like what? I don't know, Dad. But if this continues, I am afraid that she may harm herself. She talks to herself and blames herself for all the pain and suffering she has caused us these few days. It's not good to keep her in such a state of limbo. Please, let her know something soon. Okay, I'll call her tomorrow evening. Thank you. This will make the waiting game much easier. We chatted for a few more minutes before calling it a day. Now I had a deadline in which to deal with this issue. In some ways, it felt like an eternity until I finished work the next day. But there was a certain fear that comes with a plan as unique as mine. As I was leaving work, I called Scarlett and told her to take Dolly to my house after dinner. Let's say around seven. Tell her that if she is serious about change and will do everything to correct her mistakes, then she can take her things with her. I had conditions, and they were not easy. But I think they were fair. If she agreed to all of them, she could move into the guest room for now. If she doesn't agree, I'll send her back. Thank you, Daddy. I'm sure she'll agree to anything reasonable. I know you won't regret it. Mom has already become a different person. You will see. I just know. Calm down, Scarlet. I open the door, not my hands. At least not yet. We will have to see if her words will be followed by her actions. It won't be easy for both of us. I know this won't happen, but this is the biggest step. I have to go and tell my mom now. She will be so excited. We will deliver it to you at seven. Thanks again, Dad. You're welcome, darling. Love you. Bye. I love you too, Dad. Bye. I opened the front door and closed the screen door, waiting for her to arrive. I sat in the living room where I could see their car as they dropped her off, Sam carrying her bags to the porch. When they got to the door, they still didn't see me. Hi, Sam. Dolly, come in, I said decisively. Sam, please put her things over there, just outside the door. Perfect. Thank you. I just know you two will figure it out, Sam said hopefully. You two have been together for so long that the world simply wouldn't be the same if you weren't together. You must be together. Thank you, Sam. I appreciate everything you've been through over the last week. I believe we can do this, I replied. Okay, but I just know that you can do it. See you later. Dolly looked embarrassed as she stood in our living room where it all started just ten days ago. She was dressed casually but femininely in a simple blue dress. 
She wasn't trying to be sexy, but she wanted to show off her legs a little to remind me that she really was a woman. Dolly, first of all, here's what. Don't be scared and let me explain before you have a seizure. I want you to sign some legal documents that I hope I never have to use. Divorce papers. Her face showed all the shock I expected to see. They are in the kitchen, as is the notary who will witness them. They are undated, and I will only date them and serve them if you break any of the promises you make tonight. The terms of the divorce are fair. The house will be sold, and everything will be divided equally. Their only feature is that you will not be required to attend any family celebrations. Before you sign them, it's only fair that you know what promises you have to make tonight. Before I get to that, I have a few more questions for you. Come in, sit down. I took the tablet that was lying next to me. Yesterday I realized that there are two types of relationships. Obviously, there is a physical connection when two people kiss and have sex. Another is an emotional affair in which one of the spouses, in this case you, has an ongoing emotional attachment to someone else to the point that it takes something away from the relationship with the spouse. In some ways, you had an emotional affair with Bradley Morgan for over 20 years. How did this affect our relationship? Was this just my stupid daydream? If it had remained a stupid dream, everything would have been fine. I mean no disrespect to the thousands of references to my next husband. I know you say it was just a joke and that's how it all started, but after a while, the joke took on a life of its own. Do you know how many times you unknowingly called me Bradley when we made love? He raised his hand to her mouth, as if he wanted to prevent this from happening again. Fourteen times. It's easy for me to remember because they are imprinted in my mind. The first time was shortly after Scarlet was born, the last time was a month ago. It's been happening more often since this damn competition started. I guess you were warming up for it. I'm so sorry I had no idea. So, it is in this line of thought that I ask the following questions. If you managed to seduce Brad, have you wondered what you would do for him in bed? I really haven't thought about such things very much. I was just caught up in the romance of it all. But if you two were going to do it, and he suddenly asked to fuck you in the ass, would you refuse him? I never thought... I... I'm not sure. Let me remind you that we have established the fact that you went there with the goal of seducing him and showing him the best night of his life. Enough for him to leave his wife and be with you, based on the one and only chance that you, you'll get it. I ask again, would you give him what you were never going to give me? Your ass for sex? Yes or no? She looked down and I almost didn't hear her. Yes. I made a note on my tablet. Thank you for your honesty. So, is it safe to assume that if he wanted you to get down on your knees and satisfy him, you would do it too? I suppose so. I only accept yes or no answers. Yes. I made another note. So you start doing it, and he takes out a can of whipped cream, sprays it on himself in a few strategic areas, and asks you to lick it off. You will do it? Yes. I'm adding another check mark. Okay, let's say you got to the hotel room and started kissing. There is then a knock on the door and Bradley opens it, saying he was waiting for someone. This someone turned out to be a rather attractive, somewhat younger woman. He then asks, if you have any problems having sex with multiple partners, would you do this to them, yes or no? After a short hesitation, she replied, yes, I checked the box. Would your answer be different if instead of a woman there was a young, attractive man standing at the door? What does all this lead to? What does this have to do with... Patience. I will explain everything in due time. Would you have a threesome with Brad and another man? Yes or no? Yes. I checked the box again. What if the man was black and said he had ten inches between his legs? Yes. What if there were two men and two women standing at the door? He asks, are you ready for this? Would you do this for him? Yes. What if three guys show up and he asks if you would like to have sex like this for them? Yes. Her head hung a little more. Before sex begins, 
they ask you to strip naked and lie on the table. He says they will place an assortment of snacks all over your naked body. Over the next hour, they will slowly eat the snacks, caressing and groping you almost constantly. Sometimes they will take tasty morsels directly from your body with their mouths. You will do this? Yes. Okay, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that Bradley and Cindy's marriage is a weird PR stunt, and they're both gay. As you make out in the hotel room, Cindy and another guy show up, and Bradley asks you to please Cindy while he and the other guy do their thing. Would you do this? No. I can't be part of a fake relationship like this. I wouldn't be promiscuous without any chance of a future together. Mark, no. Let's say he brought you to his hotel room. You kissed hotly and hard on the couch. Then he asked you to go to the bedroom and put on the outfit he laid out for you on the bed. When you walked in there, it was a black vinyl catsuit that covered everything except your face, chest, and naturally your private parts. He also had a matching pair of six-inch platform heels that really made you look like a total slut. Would you wear this for him? Yes. What if it was a vinyl French-made costume that didn't cover your private parts? Yes. Would you wear a studded leather dominatrix costume for him? Just say yes or no. Yes. If he asked you to let him handcuff you to the bed and let him spank you and whip you with a belt, would you let him? Yes. She actually blushed at this, so very interesting. There are only a few questions left. Okay, let's say your hotel room was on the third floor and had a balcony overlooking the hotel pool. It was a sunny day and the pool was crowded. He asks you to go out onto the balcony and grab the railing while he takes you from behind, in full view of everyone. Would you do this? I didn't really think about all this. I don't think I would have allowed it. But if he insisted, and this was my only chance... Yes. She hung her head low with this confession. She has always been a very modest person when it comes to her nudity. Let's put no this time. Okay, let's say you two were kissing and decided to take it to the bedroom. He asks you to strip naked and hands you a big dildo. He asks you to use it on yourself. Would you do this? Yes. One more, Mark. What if he told you that he records all his sexual encounters, say, for legal reasons? So, he has three expensive cameras installed in his bedroom and they are waiting for you. He assures you that the tapes will never be viewed by anyone unless you try to report rape or something like that. He also says that none of his sex films end up on the internet. Otherwise, you would have heard about them by now. Would you let him film sex? Yes. Here's the last thing. You just had a very nice round of sex with him. Let's also assume that I went on a trip with you and I was busy talking to someone else while you two were sneaking out and later you spend the night with me in our room. He tells you not to clean up your act. He then asks you to seduce me as soon as we get back to our room and force me to have sex with you and pleasure you. Would you do that? Oh God, no. I could never do this to you. Would you tell him you did it even if you never intended to actually do it to me? Yes. Now I will explain why all this. You gave me a list of sexual things that you admitted you would do with him, but never even thought about doing with me. I want you to sign this list at the bottom of the page after you read the paragraph at the top. She read it out loud. I, Dolly Dillon, hereby agree to complete the following list of items for my husband, Kurt Dillon, at any time and place of his choosing. I'm doing this because I admitted that I would do all this for Bradley Morgan, and it is only fair and fair that I would be willing to do this for the man who has loved me and supported me for many years. I don't limit myself to once for each item, but no more than three times for each item unless we both agree we want to do it again. My failure to comply with the request will result in the commencement of divorce proceedings at the earliest convenient time following said refusal. Confirmed illness or injury is the only valid reason for refusal. I can't sign this. Dolly, this part is not negotiable. I will probably never ask you to do some of the things on this list, especially sex with other partners and the like. Other things, you can expect to have to do them. I'm not saying which ones right now. What I'm saying is this. If you want me to fully believe that you choose me and not him, why wouldn't you want to do it for me and not for him? 
I mean, we've pretty much established that you would be his unpaid, easy-to-get girlfriend for the night. I think you need to be willing to do some of these things for me if you're serious about coming back to me and changing the way you feel about us. You'll just have to trust me if you want me to trust you again. She answered meekly. I understand what you mean. Okay, I'll sign this. I handed her my pen, and she signed the document. The next thing we need to do to end this mess is this. I don't want to hear you say the phrase, my next husband, ever again. I'm not going to ask you to throw away all his CDs and his book, but if I hear you talk about him or anyone else like that again, you'll be on your own, just like in a divorce. Fine. I can do it. I also want you to treat me with more respect. I'm not saying you should salute me, but I think I should feel like you're Mr. That's right, instead of your Mr. Right now until someone better appears. I've put up with this for too long and I won't do it anymore. Now I know I did this to you, and I'm so sorry. You have always been my mister, but sometimes I didn't show it and took you for granted. I won't let this happen again. After everything we've been through, if I do this, you have to divorce me. I'm glad you think so. There's one more thing before we sign the divorce papers. If you ever call me Bradley when we do this again, oh, I won't, I won't. We went into the kitchen and I laid out the terms of the agreement, showing her exactly what she would be left with, which she thought was more than fair, but also showing her the grounds for divorce as adultery. You can't say that. In fact, I never cheated on you. How many times have you cheated on me in your heart? It's obvious that you used him to get pleasure from making love to me, so consider every time you did that an emotional cheating. I have to tell you, my lawyer says that if you sign these papers, you are legally admitting that you cheated on me. Her spirit fell. Good, good. Where do I sign? After I signed, the notary did his job and left. I took all the copies of the documents, went to our bedroom and locked them in my fire safe. I took the keys out of the safe and hid them elsewhere. The safe was too heavy for her to lift, so I felt safe putting them there for a while. I'll soon be moving them to a safe deposit box at a bank in a nearby town rather than the local bank where we bank. I walked out of the bedroom and found Dolly still sitting on the sofa. Does this mean I can stay? Yes, I'll help you move your things to Scarlet's old room. I think you'll be more comfortable there than at Rhett's, don't you? I was hoping for our bedroom, but I'll take what I can get. I appreciate you not insisting. I still need to work out some trust issues before you get back there and some respect issues before all your privileges are restored. What do you mean by privilege? Oh, some of the ordinary things we used to take for granted, such as tender caresses, loving gestures, sweet words, passionate kisses, lustful caresses, and, of course, sex. You're not going to make it easy for me, are you? Have you been making things easier for me for the last ten days? I understand your point of view. Okay, I deserve whatever punishment you decide to give me. I don't think of it as a punishment, but more about regaining my trust and respect. Think of it more like the beginning of a new relationship. People get to know each other, then trust, then learn to love each other. We both fell in love, but your actions last week made me question how much you care about me. Yes, I think it was so. Please believe me when I tell you that I never stopped loving you and only got carried away in my stupid fantasy when I saw what I thought was my only chance to actually make it come true. I acted like a stupid, selfish young girl full of romantic dreams. What I didn't want to do was make you think that I didn't love you. I guess it took the realization that you would no longer be there for me to realize how much I want, love, and need you. It means you, not he. I can't seem to say enough how sorry I am. Well, you've said enough for today. Let's make you more comfortable. After taking her things to the new room, I got ready to leave to let her unpack. She just looked at me with her best puppy dog eyes and asked, Do you know how long I will have to stay here without you? It just depends on how things go. This may take a week or two or several months. I don't have a specific time frame in mind. I guess whenever it feels right. She smiled knowingly, as if she thought she had a plan to shorten the time. Good night, I said, closing the door and hastily leaving. Stay strong. Be strong, I told myself, 
She will try to seduce you into letting her into your bed before you are ready. You need to be strong. I was strong. Everything is fine. She wore her shortest nighties around the house before bed. She would wear low-cut blouses without a bra and bend over innocently in front of me. She wore short skirts, again no panties, and bent over to show me her bare ass. Long story short, she teased me in every way she could think of, including accidentally dropping her towel when she got out of the shower. I made sure to be in the yard whenever she took a shower. I'm only human after all. Gradually, our new relationship developed to my satisfaction. Her actions showed that she could be trusted and that she had a newfound respect for me. I've purchased several consensual sexual activity items over the last few weeks, and I thought it was time to take it to the next level. I somehow managed to be strong even as the teasing and outbursts intensified until I told her to stop. She sulked for a couple of days. It had been a little less than a month since she had returned when I asked her to stop on her way home from work and buy us something for dinner. This meant that I would get home first, as we usually got home ten minutes apart. Sometimes I would get home first, other times she would do it. When she brought the food into the kitchen, she saw a large dildo standing in the center of the table and next to it a pair of handcuffs. It caught her off guard to the point where she screamed when she saw them. Then she quickly entered the living room where I was waiting for her. Does this mean what I think it means? She asked with a wide, mischievous smile on her face. I'm not sure what you think this means, but if all goes well tonight, and assuming you still want it, you'll have the opportunity to get into the master bedroom tonight. Woo hoo! She jumped onto my lap and started kissing me like a hungry man eats a sandwich. Get control of yourself, I said, grabbing her and pushing her back a few inches. First, you'll do a couple of things on your list tonight. My list? She looked at me blankly. Oh, shit. Which ones? Panic took over her. First, you will strip naked and play with a sex toy. Then you get comfortable on the kitchen counter because I'm going to eat my dinner off your naked body, and then you do the same to me. By the way, what did you bring home? Chicken with popcorn and dipping sauce. Ideal choice. She quickly undressed, and the show began. We came to our senses and later made love to each other before calling it a night. For the first time since our first year together, we woke up naked in each other's arms. The next morning. True to her word, she never again uttered the phrase, my next husband in my presence or when anyone else was around, and the same goes for calling me Bradley during sex. She really showed her appreciation for having me around, just like in our early years together, and it must have been contagious because I showed her the same appreciation. We did a few more things on the list. Oh, yeah. It looks like Brad took my advice, musically speaking. He teamed up with a great blues guitarist and released a blues album that went gold within a month. This sparked a new interest in the blues and several more albums by Brad and his new friend. He sent me a check for 10000 when the first album hit the top of the charts. Dolly and I used it to go on a cruise and spent a lot of time in the cabin. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one.